Well, the main evolutions may be that we try to reflect and put what we do in, in context, realize that we have very little evidence, that there are different techniques uh, that are being used, um, and not enough knowledge about what we're doing. So maybe step back, put it in perspective, which means that for, for instance, uh, functional surgery, improving the nasal airway, we should uh, probably look more at the psychological aspects of the patient. Uh, just in my talk alluded to the issue of anxiety playing a major role for the perception of breathing and for uh, aesthetic improvement uh, to maybe condense the procedure that has become increasingly complex or so something that is more target oriented and maybe a little simpler in order to improve uh, the feasibility of nasal surgery for teaching. It's uh, become very difficult for young surgeons nowadays to understand the complexity of rhinoplasty and to feel uh, themselves in a position to learn it. It should be, but it is not yet because we don't have the evidence uh, we can work on. At the moment we have a highly personalized, not precision medicine, but a personalized medicine in a triple sense that we have individual patients who come in with a broad variety, a huge spectrum of, uh, of issues and problems they bring to us, different skills of the surgeon, different preferences of the surgeons, and a whole, again, different spectrum of solutions the surgeon and the patient can work out. So this is, in a multiple sense, highly personalized. It is not precision medicine. It's the most important thing. If the end point is a happy patient, and there is many roads leading to this realm of happiness of the patient, then uh, we have to uh, thoroughly discuss uh, the options we have and find the best way, the way that uh, carries the least risk of disappointment uh, to, uh, to proceed.